Welcome to this introductory video about Realtest. We're going to go through the import section and discuss why it's important and why it's different to much other backtesting software. So here's a really simple script. In fact, it's the one that loads when Realtest first starts up. It's about as basic as any script can be for a backtest. There are three sections, as you can see. The first section is an import section. That's where we get the data that's going to be for the stocks or commodities that we're testing and we import it into real tests so that it can use it. The second section is the test settings section and that's where we tell real tests exactly which bits of that data we want to test. And the third section is the actual strategy itself. You can have more than one strategy. In this case, we've just got a very simple strategy with an entry rule and an exit rule. And that's all you need to actually run a very simple back test. We're going to be looking at some more complex examples as we go along, but today we're just going to examine that import section where we get the data into real test. So let's take a look. So the first command in the import section is the data source. In this case, we're going to get our data from Yahoo, which is free data source online. The second thing we need to say is we need to tell Realtest which symbols to go and actually get data for. So in this case, it's the S&P 500 ETF, SPY, but we could also add extras. So if, for example, I wanted to also trade Apple and Microsoft, then we can just simply add Apple and we could add Microsoft in that way, just comma separating each one. The next item is the start date, which tells it when to start getting data for. You could also add an end date and you could either specify a particular date, or if you wanted to, you could tell it to always get the latest, up to the latest data. So we could just use the word latest, and then that will always fetch from the 1st of the 1st, 1992, through to today's date, or at least yesterday's date when the data is actually available for. And the last line is what you're going to save this as. So when it's imported the data, it will actually save this to disk by default, it'll be in the real test directory, although you can specify somewhere else. And we're going to save this as sby.rtd. RTD is real test data file. You may be wondering why real test separates out the import section from the test settings section. And that's what we're going to take a look at now. The import section is used when we click this import button. So if I click import now, you'll see that it goes to Yahoo, you can see that down the bottom, and within a matter of a second or so, it had fetched the data and loaded it into memory and saved it. Let's take a look at how Realtest differs from other backtesting software. First of all, imagine a very simplified view of what's inside your computer. So the first and most important part is the CPU, the brains of the computer where all the processing is done. The CPU has access to memory or RAM, and that's where it stores things that it needs on hand right now. It's very fast to access RAM. It also has a hard drive or a disk, and on there it can store larger amounts of information, but it does so rather slowly. So let's imagine now that we have a traditional piece of backtesting software, and we have data, let's say from Yahoo, that we want to use to do some backtesting. Here's how traditional backtesting software works. First of all, it imports the data from the data source like Yahoo through the CPU and saves it all to disk maybe as a database. Then when it needs to do some backtesting, it fetches just one symbol. So if it'll go off and it'll say, give me the symbol Apple, give me all the data for Apple. It'll load that into RAM and then it will create its backtest and output the data. And when it needs the next symbol, let's say Microsoft, it will load that one from disk into RAM from the database and will again do the backtesting and create the output. This is fine, but it's also quite slow because we have lots of moving data from the disk into RAM. And so the backtesting software can run much more slowly than Realtest. Let's contrast that with how Realtest does things. So Realtest actually takes all the data that it imports and takes it straight into RAM. So it's all there in the fast memory. Of course, you may want to shut your computer down and access that same data the next day. So that's why we specify a RTD file, a file that Realtest can save the data to, and it saves that to disk where it can also be loaded in again the next day. But once we're running the back test, look what happens. All the data is already in RAM, so it can very quickly 
perform test after test after test and output it straight away. This creates a much faster system and is one of the reasons why real test is such a quick and efficient way of doing back testing. The import section of the script doesn't actually have to be in the same script as the strategy. You can use a separate script for that and share it amongst different strategies. However, in this case, to keep things simple, we're going to have the import at the top of the script. Now, what we will typically do each day is we will come into real test, we will run an import by clicking this button, the import will happen down the bottom, we'll be able to see when it's happened, and then we'll run a test or a scan depending on what our test is doing. So if I click the test button here, that will then run the test. I get results here and I can double click those and see the equity chart. You only have to do the import once. Once you've done the import for the day and if the data isn't changing during the day, then you can just make adjustments to your script and do further tests. And this is what makes real tests so incredibly quick because all that data is currently in memory. If I click the test button again, it just runs the test straight away without having to load any data. Now let's get better data than just the simple stuff available from Yahoo. We're going to change this to Norgate data, which is the recommended data source for real test. So what does Norgate data look like in practice? Well, here is the program installed, Norgate data up data. And this runs in the background on your computer and continually updates its database with all the latest information. It only deals with daily data, so it won't have intraday data by hour or by minute, but that's usually adequate for most tests that we're doing in real test. You can define what stocks you want to extract from Norgate data or commodities or Forex by going into the watch list library and you'll see that there are a whole load of predefined watch lists. So looking for the S&P 500, you can see that we can select this one, S&P 500 current and past. And it's what it calls a dynamic watch list, which means that the contents change as the index constituents also change over time. We can create our own watch list that we can use in real test by clicking this create dynamic button and at that point, we can select, for example, that we're going to select equity, operating holding companies, and there's a whole series of options here. Uh, we're going to include delisted because we want to have a full test that includes all stocks that were in uh, use at their time. Um, we're going to allow for any company domicile and any listing type and any dividend entitlement. And now we can give that a name. Uh, typically, we might use an at sign to start this so that uh, it jumps to the top of the list. And I'm going to call this full equity watch list and click save. Once I've saved it, I can just click exit. And you'll see that at the top of my watch list library, this one now appears and shows me as the author. Let's go into real test and use this watch list that we've just created. Watch lists from Norgate are preceded by a period of dot. So all I need to do is tap that and you can see it's already populating the options and there is full equity watch list at the top. So I put that in. I've got start date as 1992. We could change that to 1990 and I've got the end date as latest and we're going to save that as a different file. So we're going to save that as full equity watch list dot rtd and now when i click import that's going to be a much larger set of stocks to import so let's do that and we can see that it's connecting to norgate and is now importing 21000 symbols and it's going to take a little while while it does that because i've gone right the way back to 1990 with a very large selection of stocks one of the things that, uh, that Realtest can do and that is very useful is it can have different import sections for different scripts. So if, for example, we were running a scan that we just want to run each morning for the most current list of trading that we want to do, then we don't need to go all the way back to 1990. We can probably just go back to the beginning of last year. And so it's quite common to actually save different RTD files, one for full backtesting where you go right the way back through history and another one that is just 
the stocks that are currently in the market that you might actually want to trade and generate a list of trades from. You'll see that many of the stocks actually contain a date at the end of them as they're importing and those ones are stocks that are delisted so you can see just how many stocks were delisted during this period. The date represents the last trading date of that stock. As Realtest imports the data, it's not just importing all of the stock price data, it's actually importing a whole load of metadata as well from Norgate. So metadata would include things like the company name, it will include the sector that the company is in and relative weighting within the sector. It will include other data such as the currency, which exchange it's on and so on. And all of this is available within Realtest. And one of the big advantages of using uh, Norgate data is that you get access to all this metadata as well as the uh, historical price, cons uh, price indexes and constituents. And now we can see that that whole import has taken place and it took just about three and a half minutes to import everything into memory and save it out to the full equity watchlist.rtd file where I can load it in again at another point. And finally, as it was doing the import, Realtest also created weekly and monthly bars. So you can either use daily bars or you can use weekly or monthly bars to actually create a system that maybe works on longer time frames. We can include more than one include list in our import script. So for example, if I also wanted the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY, I could just add that here and it will include that in any import. So it would import the full equity watch list and also SPY. I would need to click the import button again to do that import to make sure that it came in. It doesn't just add it because I typed it. One of the big advantages of Norgate is that we can actually tell it to import data about what was in a particular index at a particular time. So we do that using the constituency command. And when we do that, we can tell it that we want to have the, for example, SPX, which is the S&P 500. Uh, we could also include with comma another one. For example, we could include the uh, Dow Jones index here. And again, we would need to rerun that import. Once you do that, you can then use commands like in SPX, and that will actually return a true or false for whether a particular stock was in that index on that particular date. Now let's take a look at a much more complex example. This one is in the examples folder that Realtest creates, and it's called combined.rts. And now we can probably understand what's going on in the import section. So we've got data source Norgate, so that it goes to Norgate data updater. We've got a number of import lists. We're importing various ETFs. We're importing the VIX. Uh, there's two versions because it changed on that particular date. And we're also importing the VIX index, which is indicated by the dollar sign here. And we're import including uh, two predefined watch lists in Norgate, the Dow Jones Industrial Average Current and Past and the NASDAQ 100 Current and Past, which are predefined ones, but we could extend those with our own if we wanted to. We can include in here a list of stocks or symbols that we don't want to use. So that's an exclude file. And you might do that, for example, if you have duplicate symbols. And we're also including the Dow Jones Industrial Index and the uh, NASDAQ Index uh, uh, which stocks or which, uh, which symbols were included in those so that we can then test that later on. We're starting on the 2nd of January 2010 and going up to the latest and we're saving that data as a combined.rtd file. So if we now run that import, it will go and find, first of all, it unloads the symbols that we had in previously from our previous import and now it's importing 459 symbols uh, which meet those criteria, and it did that in about 11 seconds. Having done that, we can now run a test, which I do here, and there we go. Uh, this actually combined strategy is a very good one to look at if you're developing your own strategies. It returns over 20% and has a maximum drawdown of only about 13%. And if we double click this, we can see what that looks like. We've got several different strategies all balancing each other out to produce an excellent return which is shown by the grey filled area. Just for fun, 
Let's reload that data file that we originally created from Norgate where we had 21,000 symbols going back to 1990. To do that, we go up here and we select the button to load a data file. That will then close the graph that is actually currently dependent on the data we have loaded in memory at the moment, and it will ask me where I want to actually get the data from. So you may remember it's called full equity watchlist.rtd. We click that and we click open, and down the bottom we can see that it's loading it. You may remember it originally took three and a half minutes, but that just took a matter of a few seconds. And we can see all the symbols that are loaded in there by clicking this and there are all the different symbols available, many of them with dates, so they show that they were delisted. And if we wanted, for example, to look at Microsoft, then we just simply type it, click OK, and you can see the chart and scroll backwards and forwards, etc. RealTest isn't a charting package, that's not what it's designed for, but it does still have all the chart data in there, and this is particularly useful when we come to look at later sections where we'll be able to see where entries and exits were. I hope this introductory video to how the import section has been useful to you. We'll be looking at the next sections of how to write a good real test script in the next videos. But until then, thanks for watching.